with our legal, political, and Supreme Court experts. And George Conway, I'll start with you on Trump's presidential immunity filing, uh, which is going on right now. Where do you think the Supreme Court will go on that? I think they'll probably take the case, and I think they'll probably take the case this week and set a very expedited briefing schedule um, with briefs due in January and an argument probably uh, in February with a decision um, in February. That's, that's my guess. But uh, they, they, can, they could actually turn it down. They could defer it. They could wait for the D.C. Circuit to rule, and then they could decide whether to take it at that point. You're our Supreme Court elements. What do you think? I think George is just about the 10th justice right now. Yep. <laughs> no, I, I, I actually think that's just, that's a very practical, logical approach. Look, they haven't had this question before. They haven't had either of these questions before. And it's better to sooner rather than later decide it. It's actually one where they could say Donald Trump is not immune, but he still has other defenses. So they'd be ruling against Donald Trump, but not making it impossible for him to defend himself against Jack Smith's charges. And Joan, this is all pretty much uncharted territory for the U.S. Supreme Court. It definitely is. In fact, I mean, just look at what we saw today. This is the only state ever that has ruled that uh, a president can be knocked off the ballot because of the 14th Amendment. And that's another one where I'm certain they will definitely take it up. It's just a matter of when. And some of that will depend on when Donald Trump's lawyers get their papers up there. But the immunity question is, is also fresh in the criminal prosecution. We know that it's been tested in the civil um, trial context, but it's never been tested in a criminal prosecution. So both of them are fresh issues, but both are them that only the Supreme Court can decide. There's no other nine people who can decide it. You know, it's interesting, Gloria, that uh, we just heard uh, Trump's Republican rivals, they're basically all with him yeah. on this Colorado they Supreme Court decision. Yeah, they can't catch a break. I mean, what are they going to do? They're saying, you know, we don't want the courts to, to decide who can be on a political ballot. And, uh, you know, Ron, DeSantis at least raised the point of saying, you know, this goes to the question of Trump's electability. But time and time again, these candidates find themselves defending Donald Trump, who has become a professional victim. And he is, you know, his base is energized and they're the base is behind him. And so what are they going to do? Are they going to alienate the people they want to vote for them to split off from Donald Trump? No. But once again, they're in the position of defending Donald Trump. When you want to beat him in a primary, the last thing you really want to do is to keep defending the guy. But this is exactly what the position they found themselves in today. Yes. So, so this will work for Donald Trump. The worse things go for him, the better it works for him in the primary. Very interesting indeed. You know, uh, George, you wrote an important article in The Atlantic. And let me quote from uh, uh, some of what you wrote on the Colorado Supreme Court decision. You wrote this. The argument seemed somehow too good to be true, but last night changed my mind, not because of anything the Colorado Supreme Court majority said. The three dissents were what convinced me the majority was right. The dissents were gobsmacking for their weakness. Explain what you mean by that dissent. Yeah, I, um, I have this habit when I read appellate opinions that are of a, of a divided court uh, to read the dissents first because they're shorter, they're punchier, they're more fun to read. But the, a good judge will basically stick a, a knife right through the heart of the majority opinion if it's got a real problem. And I didn't see anything there. These were pretty, you know, they, they write well. They're, they're obviously smart jurists, but they had nothing. And, and I was expecting, you know, I, I hadn't delved into it as much as, I, as, as, as maybe others have. But I thought, you know, I was pretty convinced by the Federal Society law professors who wrote the initial article that put this issue um, in play and, and by uh, my friend Judge Ludig and by, uh, uh, by Professor Tribe, uh, they thought it was very strong. And I said, yeah, it does sound strong legally, but I thought, you know, it's too good to be true. It's, I don't know if the court's really going to go that far. There's going to be something that comes up. And right now, there's nothing. And the Supreme Court, if they're going to reverse, they got to come up with something better. But you know, one thing to that, didn't you think the dissents though went after the state law issues much more than the That's fundamental right. ones? That's and, right, and that doesn't help um, uh, 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 Donald Trump in the Supreme Court because the Supreme Court of the United States has no business counter, countering what state courts say about state law. The last word on issues of state law is a state Supreme Court. So the Supreme Court, correct me if I'm wrong guys, has to decide what an insurrection is, define what an insurrection is, and also decide whether the president is indeed an officer 
of the United States. Those are two sort of crucial issues, constitutional issues. Well, the reason I even raised the state court part, because I didn't actually think the, dis the dissenters were weak. I thought they just went after a key part for right. their own state law, right. frankly. Right, um, that it they, doesn't apply to the president. Doesn't right? help. Right, it doesn't help if, in the appeal, but it also, but it's real for what's happening in Colorado right. because under the state color, election law. But he law, lost, it's over. Yeah, under the state election law, they sh they showed the, That's the right. flaws and, there. But he can't. He can't. He's done in the, in the Colorado courts. He's well, got no further avenue of review for those state law issues that the dissents raised. Right. But one I, other th one other thing on that though, Wolf, which is why it's important for the Supreme Court to come in and, and rule on this in a comprehensive way is if, if there's any kind of due process problem with what Colorado did, it will not affect other state litigation over other We shall questions. see on that front. Yeah. You know, Gloria, Trump reacted to these cases by saying, and I'm quoting him now, this is exactly how dictatorships are born. Uh, he's the one saying, uh, he is the one who said in recent days he wants to be dictator on day one. Yeah. And he's still pushing his very hateful, racist rhetoric, echoing Adolf Hitler. Listen to this, listen to this. They're ruining our country. And it's true. They're destroying the blood of our country. That's what they're doing. They're destroying our country. They don't like it when I said that. And I never read Mein Kampf. They said, oh, Hitler said that in a much different way. He's referring to immigrants to the United right. States. Right. And if I'm not mistaken, when he originally started talking about this, it was actually on teleprompter. So I think this is something, whether or not he's read Mein Kampf, um, maybe somebody who works for him has. And I think these are, this is deliberate. This is a way to, again, uh, play grievance politics, which is exactly what he does, to great success. And he's going to keep doing it. There's nothing stopping him from it. Certainly his political opponents who are challenging him for the nomination aren't stopping him from it. So if they're not stopping him, who will? Yeah, and George smearing these immigrants like this, it's oh, horrible. It's, it's horrible. I mean... Three of his four children, I think, are children of, immig of immigrants, and right. it's just it's just absurd. I mean, and and this man claiming that he he um, he hasn't read Mein Kampf. It's funny that he knows the name of that book when uh, uh, when Chief of Staff General Kelly had to explain to him what Pearl Harbor was. <laughs> Interesting. All right, guys, thank you very very much.